Hello and welcome to Monroe Live. My name is Carl and today we're going to be looking at the interior for the BMW i4. We have this vehicle on loan, so unfortunately we cannot tear it apart, but we're gonna try and see from the surface what we find and make some assumptions of what is behind it. Now, in looking at this vehicle, I'm not going to criticize the color just because you're gonna order it in whatever color you want if you are a Mercedes buyer. So I can't really criticize the selection that they gave to me. The matte finishes, I think that they are cool. However, I would never wanna try and buff out a scratch and then ruin the whole paint. I have a classic criticism of BMW interiors, mostly because everyone that you see is black. Thankfully, the one we received is not black. I think that the different colored interiors show up much better on camera and it's easier for us to see either the quality features or the flaws. In looking at the seats themselves, we we're trying to figure out the materials. All right, the perforated section, yes, that is leather, but everything else we've determined is vinyl. So we have leather inserts, vinyl shoulders or outer uh, faces. All right, so what is the market for this vehicle? What is this vehicle? I do believe this is at $82,000. At 82,000, is this a luxury vehicle or is it a sports car? I would say that this is meant to be a sports car. Um, it is approaching luxury in some of its different features, but it's not all the way there. It still has some fairly utilitarian aspects to it. All right, I'm gonna start with a door. And in looking at this door, I'm going to make a comparison that we saw to the Rivian door. So I'm gonna get this and have it ready. This is the door top roll. This is a formed part. This entire skin is formed in a machine pressed onto this substrate. All right, our medallion area. This is either a three to a four millimeter foam backed vinyl and the foam wraps all the way around the surface. There's a single decorative stitch through this. Because this is stitched through a foam backed material, you get a quilted look to the stitching. Now, the good thing about this, if you are on the assembly line, normally whenever you are stitching through a foam backed material, because the material is so thick, you don't really have a bulk at the stitch seam, which allows you some flexibility. This does not need critical alignment. All right, what does that mean? We don't really have critical alignment here. If there's too much material in the pattern, we can stretch it out to the different ends. That makes this much easier to have more quality repeatable parts. Now, this is how you define quality, however. Yes, the parts are gonna be consistent. However, because of that foam backed material, it is very round. It is very bulbous. All of the corners and all the edges are very heavy and thick. But let's look at the Rivian. All right, so the Rivian is definitely a hand wrapped product. Let me get this sticker here. This is a hard wrap. You'll see that there is no foam on this material at all. It is direct wrap over edge. It is a hard wrap on this side, but there is a foam layer on the inside. So that foam layer is most likely placed in there, the sewn cover is then wrapped over it. So that gives you the foam in the center section. When I was looking at this and somewhat criticizing it, I said, look, this T position is a locked position. It, this cover can be no other place than right there. The same for this corner, for this corner, for this T position, for this corner. This yellow, yes, I am locked in the seam groove, but I can pull out excess material, which I can pull all the way out the part. Same thing on this lower edge. Yes, I am locked. The problem with this is you're going to have a lot more rework or a lot more scrap because all these conditions have to be perfect. On any single stitch, you have a two millimeter tolerance. So I have two millimeter here, two millimeter here. Between these two lines, I can have a total of four millimeters. All right, if this is four millimeters too big, then I get a trapped wrinkle in this curve. So I need to purposely make this small but now I have a part that needs to be stretched, but not only is it being stretched, it's being stretched into a concave surface. 
over time you can have issues with adhesion popping up or just problems on the assembly line trying to work in that area on this you don't have that you don't have those red locked positions so you can get through a lot more parts you can have more uh, you can have increased initial quality, but you have these very round bulbous parts. All right, so now let's get to the armrest. I have a question about this armrest. You can do real join seams or you can actually do a fake join seam. You could form this entire shape, have a live stitch, a real stitch over it, but then just have this seam be formed. I was looking at this and I think that this seam is stitched. I was trying to open it up and there's a couple of spots where it looks to me to be stitched. But because of this tight curve right here, I don't know if this was a formed part that was stitched together. I had tried that in the past, but the alignment of patterns was so difficult that I could normally not get my features. So this armrest, is interesting to me how they executed those tight corners radiuses with having what appears to be a real stitch between then the lower section that's just hard plastic now in looking into the ip the upper panel is a cut and sew live stitch but it's kind of hidden with this screen in the way it's very hard to actually see from the driving position that seam. But the entire upper section is a cut and sew. It's not a very nice material. It's not a leather. It almost feels to me to be either a TPO or a PVC. So it's a high quality execution, but not a high quality material. Going into a layer of carbon fiber. Now there's a question about this. Yes, you can use real carbon fiber for these decorative panels, but it is truly just a decorative panel. It's not taking any load. It's not there for strength. So you can do hydrographics or you can do fake plastic parts that simulate carbon fiber. I'm not sure what that is, um, but that is on the IP and it's also on the mirrors. Uh, there is a slight color difference between the IP and the mirrors, so they may be two different executions. Going down into the lower section, this is a thermoformed skin that is foamed. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm gonna show you the Tesla Model 3 IP lower to get a comparison. So here's the Tesla Model 3. This is the lower section similar to the lower section that we were just looking at in the BMW. Now you'll see this is a thermoformed skin. It is a foam in place over top of a plastic substrate. Now the good thing about doing this is you can get very sharp corners. You can fill in areas and make features that you cannot do with a hand wrap part. Now this however makes for a very heavy part. So you're sacrificing weight. This is also expensive tooling. So you can easily spend a quarter million dollars for your plastic substrate tool you can spend a quarter million dollars for the skin forming tool. Then you can spend another quarter million dollars for the foaming tool that goes between them. All right, so th three quarters of a million dollars to be able to make this part. However, with this execution, you have a low cost finished part. If I were to just take a substrate and then wrap it, I'm putting it in a lot of labor. Adding in that labor makes for a higher cost finished part but it normally has a lower cost investment so sometimes when we're talking to customers and say oh i need a low cost vehicle like okay a low cost vehicle normally has high cost tooling high cost investment oh i don't have the money for the investment okay so if you don't have the money for investment then you're going to have a high individual piece price but you're going to have low cost tools that high piece price is directly related to your vehicle selling price you end up having a balancing act. You can't have both, um, or it's very difficult to have both unless you make some very sacrificial decisions. So let's go back and look into this I-4. So going from the seats, we do have a 
wrapped armrest cover. You know what kind of surprises me? You see the French stitch or the double-sided decorative stitch going along all of these joint seams. That's the same seam that is on top of the IP, just of course in a different color to contrast with the black. I'm surprised that they did not do it on the center console. Center console just has two material joint seams, but there's no decorative seam going over them. Now that decorative seam would cause problems going over this tight interior corner on the front. So maybe they sacrificed the seam for this condition, but I'm just kind of surprised that they did those decorative seams in other locations, but skipped this part. The rest, of course, it's more of a traditional car, a uh, much bigger display screen, which is more and more popular even in internal combustion engine vehicles, traditional air vents, traditional buttons, a lot of buttons as a matter of fact. That goes to either a design philosophy. Some customers like having a fixed button. They like the muscle memory of saying, when I wanna turn on my heat, I don't even have to remove my eyes from the road. I just know where that button is. Some people like to move all of that to a center screen and just get rid of all of the clutter. It depends on you. It depends on the customer of what that, what's needed. So I'm a big guy. I will completely admit it. And when I was going to buy my last car, the salesman takes me up to the vehicle and without even opening the front door, I opened the rear door and got in the back without adjusting the front seat. And then the salesman looks at me and says, well, you're not going to be riding back there. They always adjust the front seats really, really far back to show you, look how much legroom you have. Well, I'm a big guy and my friends are the same size as me. So for all riding in my car, I need to know that they're going to be comfortable in the back seat. So let's hop in this back seat. Okay. For me, this is not very comfortable. My knees are right hard up against the front seats. My toes are hard up against underneath the front seat. So I have no freedom of movement there. But look at the back of my head. There is a headrest on this seat. And my head cannot reach it. I hit the roof in a whiplash incidence more than I will hit this headrest. So then the question is, this is not a luxury car, this is a sports car. I can understand this condition in a sports car. Uh, as long as the customer who's ever buying this vehicle knows this is the condition that you have, and if you have people as big as me, you're not taking them out for lunch while you're at work. They're gonna be quite uncomfortable. The interior itself, the stitching is done kind of nice. Now this is an interesting question. Look at the back panel. This is just an injection molded plastic back panel with a net mat pocket. That is the lowest end you will see for any back panel mat pocket. So on a $25,000, $30,000 car, this is what you would get. I did some minivans and this is what we had in the minivan. All right, what about the color? It's black. So this interior is two-tone. It is black and whatever you wanna call this, a camel tan brown color. Why doesn't the back panel match the seat? Well, it's a lot cheaper just to make one part number rather than have every different color available. So sometimes we would recommend that to customers that are really wanting a cost save. Do you have to have the same color for your entire seat? However, I can see that on a cost save for a $30,000 vehicle. This is an $82,000 vehicle. At $82,000, I would expect this to match the seat. I would not expect to have a different color. So in trying to look at this as a complete package, trying to establish what is it? Is it a sports car? Is it a luxury car? Is it halfway in between? The features that I see, I would say they are halfway in between. There's still a lot of just plain injection molded plastic. There's still a lot of inexpensive thermoformed. There is some hand wrapped components. There are some choices that they made about keeping the seat plastics all black, which may or may not be right for this price point of a vehicle. 
the hard plastic sides to the center console. This vehicle, I would say for interior trim is halfway in between of being a standard base commuter vehicle to being a luxury vehicle based solely on the interior features or interior finishes. I'm not trying to sell this vehicle and unfortunately we are not going to be able to tear this vehicle apart. I just question the price point. What is justifying the price point of this vehicle? Is it that it is an electric vehicle? Okay, well we see some electric vehicles selling for $40,000. What about this vehicle puts it up to 82? I don't really see it. Sometimes this turns into more of a marketing thing. They want to say that they have a vehicle for every segment along a range and they just pick one and put it in there, put the price on and say, this is that vehicle that's in that range. It may or may not hold up. Um, I've seen much more premium interiors in a lower cost vehicle. So I honestly, overall standing back, it looks cool. Yes, it looks cool. But once I get to the details, I think it kind of falls apart for me. So I hope you learn something. I hope you kind of see the thought process that I put into when I'm trying to look at these different materials. I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Apparently we're pretty close to 300,000 subscribers. I really don't know what that means, but hey, can't hurt to subscribe on your end. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. Yeah.